While UPS is going after Congress, the CEO announcing he's going to lobby members to pass that trade deal. The CEO, David Abney, joins me now. David, um, we understand that uh, since both presidential candidates are, are, are campaigning against TPP, there's a sense of urgency. But it's clear also that the American public doesn't want it. What are they missing? You know, I don't believe it's clear that the American public doesn't want it, by the way. There is a a vocal group of people that don't want that do not want the agreement but uh, just a recent Pew Research uh, Center uh, survey showed that more than 50 percent of Americans believe that trade agreements are positive and uh, I believe there's a lot of people that do see the benefits it's going to create jobs it's going to create opportunities it's good for companies employees and for our country David, I haven't seen it. Most people haven't seen it, uh, but they do believe that uh, past deals such as NAFTA uh, have cost us jobs, that they were poorly crafted, and that uh, the American worker has paid a heavy price for it. What do you say to people who believe that? Well, first, I would say that not everyone believes that either, but uh, comparing NAFTA to, to this agreement, you have to remember NAFTA was 20 years ago. This agreement, TPP, is a 21st century agreement that is tailored at uh, conditions that we're facing today. E-commerce really wasn't uh, something that was on the table back then. E-commerce crosses borders all the time uh, now, daily. And then small businesses certainly are, are affected by not having this trade agreement. David, so could you, but this uh, trade agreement has a lot of additional protections. Could you, could and has you a say lot more the, Could you say to the American public that TPP would create more jobs than it would destroy? Absolutely, I believe that, and I think a lot of others believe that. In fact, the U.S. International Trade Commission has said that it would be positive from a financial standpoint that it would increase exports and that it would uh, increase jobs. Right. You have to remember, Charles, that 95% of the world's consumers live outside the U.S. We need to embrace the future. We need to address that 95% of market opportunity. Although, as Cynic was saying, your last quarterly report, uh, your international sales were up at 11%. Uh, it was a record-setting quarter for you, and this might help UPS more than anyone else. And I don't want to, you know, make it personal, but some may say you're talking your own book here. Hey, Charles, we don't manufacture products. We receive products from our customers. And our customers tell us that barriers to trade are keeping them from being able to compete internationally. Right. That's why we're pushing this agreement, because we hear it loud and clear from our customers. Real quick, David, I want to just, uh, an aside, if you, and we don't have much time, but I do want to ask you about drones. They're coming on strong. Does drone delivery, uh, what it means for your business, but more importantly, how much of a reality is this going to be, uh, that soon we'll be getting most, a lot of our stuff delivered straight to the door by drones? You know, I don't know that soon we'll be getting a lot of stuff, but drones will continue to to serve a purpose and uh, will be part of the solution. As you may know, we are doing a test right now with Zipline, a, uh, zone ma a drone manufacturer, and with Gavi, the uh, Vaccine Alliance, where we're actually going to use dr drones to deliver important vaccines and medicines right. to hard-to-reach places in Rwanda. Right. And so we do see especially in remote areas, there can be some good uses. David Abney, CEO of UPS, thank you for taking out the time. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Charles.